Hello and welcome to this India Today special. At a time when there is a tug of war between the executive and the judiciary, particularly over the manner in which judges are appointed under the collegium system, what is the road ahead? Who better to tell us that than the country's foremost jurist, the Eminos Gri of uh, the judiciary, Fali Nariman, 94 years young, 72 years in the judiciary, and uh, as I said, the foremost jurist in the country, Mr. Nariman. No, 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 no not at all. No. But uh, yes, I, I've seen a lot of Sundays, as <laughs> you can call it that. You've seen a lot of Sundays, but have you seen the kind of Sundays that we are seeing at the moment where virtually on a daily basis, the executive and the judiciary seem to be heading towards some kind of a confrontation, particularly over the collegium system of appointing judges. I have seen that. But I think it is purely futile. You see, if you want to know the solution, and if anybody wants to know the solution, the government itself has provided its own solution. The previous government, the NDA government, there is a bill, I don't know if you've seen it, it's called the National... Uh, judicial appointment? No, 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 no. It's the Constitutional Amendment Bill of 2003. Right. 2003. Based on the recommendation of the Venkatachala Commission. That is the commission to mm -hmm. of, uh, of the Constitution. And that gives a complete idea of what really should be there. And if only the law minister would pick it up and brush, it, brush off the, uh, the dust from it. It says that a commission, and the commission is certainly a better way of doing things, a national commission with a member which have to be five, three senior most judges of the Supreme Court. Why? Because Otherwise, it would damage the basic structure of the Constitution, the independence of the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And then they are hoping that there can be some confabulation. But I don't know why we don't pick it up instead of making, throwing stones at one another. We, those who support the collegium system, throw stones at the government. The government starts throwing stones back again to the judges and that's all the mess. So you're asking in a way yeah. the government to look back at what the Vajpayee government did, did. and the, what the Vajpayee government had proposed in terms of the constitution. And do you know why, why it was, yeah, and you know why it was not passed? Mm. It was not passed only because the Lok Sabha was dissolved. Elections were called. <laughs> so you're so not, you're, you're, you're saying the constitution uh, review suggestion of the Vajpayee government which proposed three of the senior most judges uh, to be uh, along with the government along with two, two members uh, along with two members of the government like. chosen by the prime minister Correct. and the leader of the opposition in yes. consultation yes. this this five member committee could have become a space for appointing judges and the matter can be resolved. With an office, with an office, so that everything would be discussed, would be known. You see, the judge's job, quite frankly, is not for appointment of, of other judges. Mm -hmm. That's not, not, there, not been there at all. There, there has been a historical past to this. Because in the old days, when it was said, you consultation with the Chief Justice, in amongst all the the uh, constitutional functionaries, the only one which required a consultation with anybody was the Chief Justice mm -hmm. and in the judiciary. And that, that was, I mean, you will find Govind Vandar Pant saying in the, in the Lok Sabha that out of 299, three, uh, 297 appointments were all with the concurrence of the Chief Justice at that time. So there's, uh, I don't know why all this... Uh, uh, Tom Fullery goes on. I'll tell you why. Because it was post-1993, the second judge's case, which ironically you appeared and won. That's right. That resulted in the collegium system coming That's in right. place and judges appointing their own. That's or right. judges appointing fellow judges. That's right. The government in 2015 brought the national, uh, 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 the NJAC bill and decided that 
this but bill, it was not the Venkat Chalaya bill. It was not the Venkat Chalaya bill. That's an important distinction you're making. Yeah. But it was a bill that would, in a way, take away some of those powers of the judges to become the sole uh, uh, arbiters of who becomes a judge. Yeah. That was, uh, that was struck down in the Supreme Court on the grounds of the basic structure doctrine being affected. Yes, but, but, but why? Now the you, government is saying we want to go back yes, to yes, it. Yes, but you must know why, why this basic structure. It's not, not a mantra, hmm. not the basic structure mantra. It is because, contrary to what Venkatchala had suggested, this was a scheme of seven of them, six of them, sorry, six members of a commission, with two non-lawyer, non-judges, who would have an overriding veto over judges' suggestions. That was the crux of the matter. That was the crux of this National Judicial Commission. Otherwise, I, don't, I think that they, uh, the judges would probably welcome this if you had a commission with, with, uh, as, as Venkatchala has suggested. In fact, some of the judges in the NJAC judgment itself said, yes, the collegium system needs reform. Of course it does. And you believe it does need reform. Of course, of course. You should have appointees you of the government have. along yeah. with the three senior most see, judges. I tell you, Lord Cook, who was a distinguished judge from New Zealand, he was the only judge to be appointed in the House of Lords in England also. He, when he, when he was asked to make, give a lecture here, he, the title of his lecture was, Where Angels Fear to Tread. Hmm. And the first line of that is, Fools March in Where Angels Fear to Tread. So, that was, that was the suggestion. I mean, he, 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 he therefore <laughs> made a very uh, deaf title. You know, we have reached a stage, though, where there seems to be mistrust at the moment between the Absolute executive mistrust. and the judiciary. But you see, Raj, I don't know, Rajdeep, the, if you read uh, Chagla's memoir, yes. and he was one of, in my view, the most distinguished judge that ever that was there in the country from 1950. M.C. Chagla. And M.C. Chagla, outstanding. Now, he writes and he said that, he was not very fond of uh, uh, Mr. Moraji Desai, who was the chief minister, nor did their habits concur. But in any view of the matter, every month they'd meet each other at one place or another, either in the chief justice's house or in the chief minister's bungalow in Bombay, and discuss, because there's a lot to discuss, not merely judges. There's a lot to discuss about whether the head of a judiciary and the head of the executive between them. I don't see why, why they can't be this camaraderie and this one-to-one uh, this -one without the press, without the media, without everybody being there. Are you saying yeah. that the way out, therefore, yeah. is either the Prime Minister and the Chief Justice meet regularly yeah. or the Law Minister and the Chief Justice meet regularly Absolutely. behind closed doors, Absolutely. not by throwing muck at each other or certainly not by the executive suggesting, for example, as Mr. Rejuju only yesterday has, the law minister says judges are not elected. Oh, that, you know, that we've heard that before. And therefore, because they are not elected, in a way questioning whether they can dictate terms you to see, parliament which is elected. You see, elected judges, I mean, you know, they, they, America is the finest example of because they have a mix. The state judges are elected. Yes. The federal judges are not. Yes. And they are appointed for life. And you see the difference. They themselves will tell you that it's, and they are weaning away from the election, election system totally because it just doesn't work. But the exact quote uh, of Mr. Rejuju, Mr. Nariman is this, unlike politicians, a judge does not have to face an election again. But the people are watching you, your judgments, the way judges function, the way you provide justice, the people are watching. Do you see this as an attempt to intimidate the judiciary in some way to get the judiciary quite to foreign Quite unnecessarily, life? quite unnecessarily. This is my regret. This is my, you see, there is much to be said in favor of the collegium system. There is very much more to be said against the collegium system. There is, and therefore, there has to be a solution. Now, what is the actual solution? And that's what I said, Venkatchala, in his wisdom, and he was a judge about, no, I mean, he was yes. one of our, in, the, uh, in, the, in this century, perhaps, uh, the, the best that we've had so far. Was the, the, the outstanding. So, 
that solution yes. of the three senior most judges yes. and in a in a uh, in a committee of five in a committee of five yeah. with the chief justice having the final say but, but not there's no question but the three will have the final three. say three so yes. it, 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 you have an odd number of five yes. it would be decided by majority majority would those you see, one of the issues, Mr. Nariman, about the collegium system is that it is opaque. Yeah. That because of its opacity, uh, people don't know why a particular judge has been appointed or why another one appointment has all, been blocked. That's all over the world. That's all so over should the world. that system be made more that, transparent? All, yes, of course. They can be made more transparent. In fact, in England now, they have people who have to apply for being a judge. You can't be appointed if you don't apply. You say, I'm interested in being a judge of this court. That, should that reasons be given? Should uh, should the judiciary? No, 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 no. You don't no, need no, to give no, reasons. No, no, there's no, no. I don't, I don't think they should be given reasons at all. You must give them some leeway, mm -hmm. some leeway. A little bit of uh, thing, play in the joints. Mm -hmm. There has to be a play in the joints. I'm very sorry, I don't agree at all. Mm -hmm. You have to trust somebody. You see, the trouble, trouble is, as you are saying, mm -hmm. trust has broken down. Now, if the, if people don't meet, of course, trust. If you and I don't meet. Mm -hmm. Every week, if we have something in common and yet we don't see each other, then we go to the press and say a nasty things about one another. That's, is, that's what's happening. Is it just about a lack of trust or somewhere an attempt being made to get judges to fall in line? Because you've seen a number of judicial appointments have been blocked. But, but you in see that exact appointments are being blocked. But if, if people will only realize that's exactly what happened in the emergency, that's exactly what happened. When the first, in the first judge's case, after the first judge's case, which is known as the first judge's case in 81, what was said? They said, no, the constitution only says in consultation with the president will appoint the judges in consultation with the chief justice. That doesn't mean anything. That only means he'll have to ask him, Mr. Chief Justice, what do you say? And then appoint whomsoever he chooses. But it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen that way. It happened the way that the judiciary was always respected and the governments that came that were there for the first 20 years were always, always consulted the Chief Justice and hardly ever, the one or two, it should happen, appointed someone outside the pale of the Chief Justice's dictate. You know, you mentioned very significantly, significantly, Mr. Nariman, the emergency. Yeah. Because that is where the system broke down. Yes. And that is where the judges, in a way, found themselves subservient to the executive. And I'll tell you why. Because judges were transferred during the emergency, not for exigencies of service or for any convenience or because there were more judges needed in a particular court, but only because they gave judgments which were unfavorable to the judgment, government of the day. This is, this is how it happened. And that's why the collegium system. That's right. That's the point I was going to come to, that the second judge's case and the collegium came into place because people feared that the excesses of the emergency could not be allowed to be repeated again. That's right. Now when you see what's happening, do you fear that there is another attempt by yes, the course, executive? Of, yes, of course I do fear, fear. To go back to the kind of emergency domination of the judiciary? I, I do fear. That is why I make the suggestion that, I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no hallmark on the collegium system that we must have this system and nothing else. I don't think anybody will say that. But the government says national commission, I say yes, have mm -hmm. a national commission. Your own party had proposed it, had a bill, we introduced that bill, that's all. <coughs> is, is part of the problem also the quality of judges and the fact that some of the judges themselves now have a question mark over them, over the kind of judgments that are delivered, the manner in which some judges make statements sometimes uh, uh, praising politicians, uh, judges becoming or chief justices becoming Rajya Sabha we used to call them within, uh, within yeah. months of their uh, retirement. We, we used to call them bandwagon judges in the emergency. Bandwagon, bandwagon judges. judges. Yeah, jump on the bandwagon. So are we back to bandwagon judges? That's unfortunate. You see, on both sides, uh, you, can, you have to blame both sides. I, I don't blame one side at all. I blame both sides. I mean, this, is, this has been stirring up and it's, a, it's, it's something to, to, to uh, it makes good, good political uh, mileage. 
gives good political mileage. That's about all. What? And I don't think that's good for the country. Mm -hmm. That's not good for the country. What would you therefore advise uh, both sides now to do? To step back first yes. and go into dialogue yes. behind closed doors? Yes. And you're saying bring back the Venkat Chalaya uh, Commission report and uh, go by the bill which suggested that you could have a five-member commission. Am yes, I right? And I, and, I, and I think the first step, I mean, speaking for myself, I think the law minister was right. When he, when he suggested in a letter which came the other day, this was before all this happened, mm -hmm. namely that why not have one person who is nominated by the law ministry in the collegium? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what he was suggesting. Yes, all right. You have no problem with I that? I have no problem with that. I don't think anyone should have any problem. Because, you see, when sitting together, instead of writing letters to one another, mm -hmm. whether you should be appointed or I should be appointed or I should not be appointed and you should be appointed, instead of all that, can't we sit across the table and discuss this? It's far better to discuss something. No, the fear is, of course, that the moment you allow someone who is appointed by the government or nominated by the government on any such uh, body that will appoint judges, then the government has a foot in the door. Yeah, and right. once they have a foot in the door, they will break the door open and decide who becomes a judge that's and who doesn't. But that's, that's why I said, why not have a, uh, constitutionally have a commission? That is what was proposed. I mean, that's a simple solution. It's not something out of my head. It's something out of somebody else's head, which I am only repeating. You know, all of this, Mr. Nariman, is happening at a time when public confidence in the judiciary has, has declined, diminished. You I know, can but, see that. You I know, uh, that. is that something that also troubles you? That you know, the public out there is seeing judicial delays mounting. Yeah. They are seeing uh, uh, judgments. You know, uh, the, the buzz in the corridors of certain courts certainly is, uh, yes. it all depends on which bench yes, you get. Yes, yes, and my son and your, your relative and so on. You see, that's so part, part of the problem. Government also is suggesting is. that nepotism has grown in the collegial maybe, system maybe. and a lack of meritocracy. Maybe, 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 maybe. But let's not get, you see, this only means that we are now throwing stones once again at each other. Yes. Therefore, there has to be a solution now. I mean, what is the solution? And the quicker we come to a solution, the better. Instead of each of us saying, no, uh, only judges will appoint judges. Because as I told you, I mean, this is a question of angels here to trade business. In, you know, because, because there are judges who, ironically, were part of the NJC judgment, like Justice Chelameshwar. He says proceedings of the collegium were absolutely opaque and inaccessible, both to the public and history. Right. Justice Korean Joseph collegium system lacks transparency, there accountability are. Are. and objectivity. There so even former judges of the Supreme yes, Court absolutely. do not believe it's perfect. Even former CJI, uh, Justice J.S. Verma, author of that 93 judgment that brought in the collegium yes, system, well done, well done. has said that he believes yes. that there should be a National Judicial Commission yes. which gives a role to the executive. He was absolutely correct. Uh, that's why I said that that would put an end to everything. You see, the, the rumor is, and mm. everybody thinks, the judges are against the National Judicial Commission, mm -hmm. or the public is against the National. Yes, the public wants the National Judicial Commission. The National Judicial Commission was discovered, or rather the idea of it came from a judge, the topmost judge of the country at one time. Mm -hmm. it, the government accepted it. Please repeat it. Just follow it. You are asking Mr. Rijuju to go and read what the Vajpayee government was doing at to the time. To read your bill. To read your bill, your own bill. Your uh, own bill. You know, do you fear, fear though that even if you have a commission, there will be cases of people getting into the judiciary for reasons you other see, than merit. But you must, you must realize that it is always so. Where it's a question of promotion. Mm -hmm. And the question is not merely of seniority, but of ha picking somebody from a particular list, mm -hmm. which is because they have a seniority list, and you pick up Mr. 99 from one list, and you pick up number one from another list. I mean, that, that causes some disquiet. If I have worked for the judiciary so quite often, but we don't want all that. We are not trying to please persons. The, the idea of a, a Supreme Court and a constitutional court is to have the best possible minds in the country. The best possible. 
but are you worried? I mean, one is the, I am you know, the, the, the debate at the moment is on the collegium system. Yeah. However, there are several other issues that are equally troubling. Uh, we've seen what is called the sealed envelope system, wherein, uh, you know, uh, on important cases, uh, the government gives a sealed envelope, for example, to the judiciary and uh, judgments are delivered over which there's a huge question mark. Uh, yes, yes, of course, it's all wrong. There I are, quite agree with you. You know, there are question marks over the quality of judgments yes, being yes, delivered, yes, over whether there are yes, pressures yes. involved, over the manner in which the senior judges take post-retirement benefits from the government. Absolutely correct. Should we be looking at all of this to restructure, uh, restructure the judiciary or only look at the collegium system? No, no, we look at everything, quite right. That's why I said, in the first place, why not have a dialogue? Instead of all this going to the press, you going to the press and I going to the press and I going to the media and so on and bearing my views, why not have a dialogue between the chief justice and the law minister? What's wrong with that? As I told you, Chagla said that that is the best way out of any, any uh, uh, dis disquiet amongst uh, human minds. And you're saying this despite, even if they have differences, yes. as Mr. Chagla had with Morarji Desai. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you have uh, differences with the law minister and the prime minister, or they have a difference of opinion with the chief justice, yes. it is possible for the two sides to meet and find a solution. Find a solution. That's the ideal solution. I say ideal thing instead of my proposing it or you proposing it. No, let me put it this way. If Fali Nariman is proposing it, yes. maybe the two sides just based on what on, on your credibility may actually agree to your suggestion, hopefully. I, I, I sincerely hope so. I'm, I'm beyond all that. I don't practice anymore. But I'm just saying that there's no point now in, uh, in having all this... Uh, to two meh meh between uh, the two sides. It, and it, it's not good for confidence in the country. Not good at all. I mean, you can get some political mileage out of it if you like, but, but it's not good at all. It's, it's, you know, I, in conclusion, as you look back, do you believe the judiciary today is in a better place than when you were in it? Or do you believe that unfortunately, like many other institutions in this country, the judiciary too has got corroded, undermined, and lost some of its integrity, spine yeah, and independence. Yeah, I think the latter is correct. Yeah, the latter is correct. That the judiciary has indeed yes, lost its yes, independence, yes, yes, its yes. spine, yeah, its no integrity. There's no doubt about that. Yes, there's no doubt about that. I Quite right. We have practiced since 1950, so I do know. I mean, how, how courts were looked upon by everybody concerned, and how they look upon them today. And uh, as you said, the law's delays are perhaps the, the greatest. And delays, what, corruption. No, no, there's another thing. Tribunalization. I'm totally against the tribunalization of the judiciary. Anywhere they want you set up a tribunal. What's the use of a tribunal? Everybody comes back into the, as a writ to the High Court or the Supreme Court because the confidence of the public is not in tribunals. It's in the courts. And these are the issues which probably need reform. Yes. And these are the issues which need urgent dialogue and before the situation completely Dialogue collapses. is of the essence. Dialogue is of the essence. Absolute. I hope Mr. Rejuju, Justice Chandrachud are listening uh, to Fali Nariman. Dialogue is of the essence. Uh, do what Justice M.C. Chagla and Morarji Desai did. Sit across a table and find a solution. And hopefully... Mr. Nariman might even agree to play interlocutor. No, no, I, I'm too old now. I'm too old. <laughs> so you are, you, may, you are not old, but you're certainly wise. And I hope that that wisdom uh, now is passed on to this generation. Let's hope so. Let's all pray that it is so. Mr. Nariman, as always, it's a pleasure talking to you. No, thanks a lot. And uh, stay young <laughs> and, and keep guiding us. Fali Nariman giving us, in a way, a perspective to what is becoming an extremely troubling tug-of-war between the judiciary and the executive. Rajdeep Sardesai for India Today.